All right, we are talking my top three duty holsters today, whether you are military, law enforcement, or security. I likes me some good draw times. Mm -hmm. Give you a little bit of that sling blade action. All right, before we get into these three holsters today, uh, we got to pay the bills real quick with the help of today's video sponsor. That is going to be Hidden Hybrid Holsters, longtime supporter of the channel. They make those sweet, sweet suede backed leather and kydex fronted holsters, hence the name hybrid. They also make other goods like belts and other doodads like that. And they make a holster for your Tabasco sauce. Check those guys out at Hidden Hybrid. Okay, before we get into the holsters, we have to set some ground rules today. One, I have not tested every holster in the world, not from every company, and I especially haven't tested your buddy Bubba Down by the Rivers holsters, who makes the finest retention holsters in the world, I'm sure. But I've tested a lot of them from the different jobs I've had, and I've seen a lot of them break or not break or fail or not fail when it comes to teaching at the academies or defensive tactics or ground fighting, all the stuff I've done in different jobs I've had. So anything can fail. We'll talk more about that later, but these are kind of three that really rise to the top. They're that creme de la creme when it comes to the duty holsters. Also, all of these are going to be retention holsters, hence duty holster. It's going to be anything from a level one, like this Safari Land that just has the little thumb brake right here, up to level three. Um, all of these are pretty much offered though in a level one through three design. And the reason we're only talking about retention duty holsters because if you're carrying a gun for a living in anything other than some form of retention holster with active retention, not passive pressure retention, you're probably not thinking very well and you need to probably reassess that because retention can save your life, but it can also slow you down. So there is a balance there when you choose a duty holster. Let's get rolling into the holsters and the first one is going to be the tried and true Safari Land. So this version is the ALS only holster. Now these are well proven. I've loved these holsters for years and I've been wearing Safari Land holsters for close to like 20 years. So not to date myself, uh, that really dates me. But I've been wearing these as a serious work, a retention holster for a lot of time and they are just one of the most proven brands out there. Safari Land has options from level one through level three. And remember, retention can save your life. But as retention goes up, speed usually comes down. So there's a happy median there. And there are some that just outperform the Safari Land that we'll talk about here in a second. Now, the durability on the Safari Land stuff, I think is second to none. I personally, the one I'm carrying right now at work, I think I've carried it for about five years. The one previous to that where I had my 1911 in there with thousands and thousands and tens of thousands of draws on it, it carried for about seven years before I finally wore out the ALS mechanism. But that's replaceable, so you can just throw a new one in. The shell of the holster will pretty much last forever unless you run it over with your truck. When it comes to the Safari Land, the ALS only version is going to be the fastest. The one with the SLS hood and the ALS definitely slows you down a little bit, but it gives you an additional level of retention. And trust me, if you've ever been in a fight on the ground with a gun, trying to keep that gun in a holster, retention really does start to matter a lot. They're going to come in three different ride heights for your belt slides on there. You're going to have a high, a medium, and a low rise. Me personally, I prefer the low rise because I've got some super long arms, so it just seems to help me draw the pistol a little bit quicker. The one crazy thing with them is they're going to have a positive cant in them. What do I mean by that? The gun is going to be slightly tilted forward like this in the holster because for some odd reason, they think that that whole forward FBI cant is what people like and it causes you to mess your wrist like this to get the gun out. Me personally, I hate it. Everybody I know hates it. And we generally go out and buy something or modify the forks so it gives us a positive, excuse me, a uh, actually zero or a negative cant on it because a negative cant actually kind of helps you draw a little bit faster, at least it does for me. But at minimum, most guys want it zero. They want that holster straight up and down. So the cant, that's the one real downside when it comes to the Safari Land. Price-wise on the Safari Land, there are a ton of different options from drop legs to different hood designs to SLS, SLS, ALS. But in all reality, most of us out there, if you have a red dot on your pistol, you're carrying a light on there and you want these standard kind of mid, low rise, whatever belt slide on there, 
you're going to be between about 150 to 200 bucks depending on the model and the design there's different covers you can get cordura you can different colors and anytime you start adding that stuff the price goes north i think we all know that and then if you start adding stuff like that QLS fork to make it easy to take on and off your gear, if you change belts or holsters or kit, um, that drives the price up as well. So for basic holster, buck 50, two bills, pretty normal for a good duty holster. And I'm gonna bring this up because I know somebody's gonna ask when it comes to where Safari Land stuff is made, it really depends. Almost all of mine say Mexico. Um, some of the stuff is made in Tijuana, literally in Tijuana, I know. Some people might be shocked by that. They do have US made stuff. They have a plant in California. And then I'm almost positive all the stuff that they supply to the DOD is very compliant. It has to be made and sourced in the United States. So it kind of depends. Um, I think for most of us out there buying our own gear, you're probably gonna get one that came from Mexico. All right, before we move on, we have to talk about the defeatability of holsters because nothing is undefeatable. It's a somewhat mechanical plastic kydex or whatever device. And in training scenarios, whether it was at the academy or ground fighting classes that we were putting on wherever I've worked, we've pretty much broken everything. So no holster is undefeatable or unbreakable. What I will say is those scenarios were generally usually taken to the extreme and we were really attempting to break or defeat those holsters. And most of us doing that had a really good idea of just about how every holster worked but I've ripped them off people's belts. I've sheared the mechanisms off. I've broken the thumb brakes off of them. We've pretty much destroyed just about every company's holster out there. It's just a matter of strength and time. So none of these are undefeatable. They're just better than a lot of the other ones out there in the market. All right, the next one up is going to be the Alien Gear Rapid Duty Force holster. And yes, it's still on my belt because I didn't buy the quick release setup for that one, but I probably will because I haven't always been kind to alien gear. Now, when they're kind of shape shift design stuff started coming out several years back, I started seeing it. And I just wasn't really impressed and I didn't think the quality was quite there yet. So I think they've gotten a little better, but like I said, I haven't always been nice to them in the comment sections or in videos. Now I started to see these rapid duty force holsters show up out there on uh, cadets in the Academy and out there in the world. And I kind of started to take notice. And I know there were some problems with the initial release of them, but I have to say on the current versions that are out, they seem to have rectified everything. And I've got to eat a whole lot of crow because these are hands down one of the fastest holsters that I have ever used on the range, especially for a level three. Now, much like Safari Land, they have different versions of these, whether you want level one, two, or three retention. You can get them with a hood, you can get them without a hood, you can get them light bearing, you can get them optic ready. And that's all gonna to have to do with what you're carrying and what type of price you're gonna end up paying. Alien Gear has their own QD system, so if you change from gear to gear or kit to kit, you can rapidly take it off and throw it on your next belt, your next plate carrier, whatever you are carrying that thing on, whether it's drop leg, belt slide, whatever. They pretty much got you covered there. It's an open bottom design, which for me is very important because in the state of Arizona, it seems to be that we have rock landscaping everywhere. And again, if you've ever been in a fight trying to retain your gun or stuff gets down in there, that open bottom design helps everything just empty right out of the bottom should anything get in there when you get up off the ground. Also for my people that love LARPing out there, myself included, doing some hardcore training out on the range, rolling around, going from hip to hip, side to side, you're gonna fill your holster full of dirt. Some of the other ones aren't quite as good in the market out there as letting all that dirt, rock, landscaping, grass, whatever it is, fall through the bottom of that holster. So an open bottom design to me is really important. The quality and the durability of the Alien Gear seems to be on point with pretty much everything we would expect out of a modern duty holster in the modern era. Again. They did have some issues, I think with mostly fasteners, kind of the screw points on that initial release. But from everything I've seen out there on videos and people testing it and my own testing with this thing, they seem to have ironed that out and it's blazing fast. Again, for a level three holster, surprised the heck out of me and I had to eat a ton of crow. And just to kind of emphasize that speed a little bit in a level three Safari Land, which is an ALS and an SLS, I was able to shave about a quarter second off regularly. So like eight, nine out of 10 times going to a level three Alien Gear Rapid Duty Force. Now, a quarter second in a gunfight, that's an eternity. So in a law enforcement or a military or security career field, uh, most of the time you're gonna be reactionary. So the ability to get that thing out of the holster that much faster and start putting rounds down range is a huge positive. If you can gain a quarter second in a gunfight world, take it. <laughs> you really wanna take advantage of that quarter second. Moving into that price, you're gonna be looking about that same price range, right around 150 to 200 bucks, depending on all the options, where you can find it and buy it from, stuff like that. So 
right in there with the Safari Land, pretty much everything you would expect. When it comes to where that thing is made, made in the USA, I don't think they're making that holster anywhere else. Their website says probably made in the US. So that's definitely cool. Um, anytime you can afford to buy something that's US made, I try to, I know it's not possible for everything. I know some people seem to think it is, but it's not. Um, just look at your phone, probably not made here. So if you can spend a couple extra bucks as compared to something else and get a good solid fast US made holster, well, why the heck not? And finally, last but not least, the CompTAC CT3. So this is their level three holster. It's got a thumb press, a hood design on it, optics ready, light bearing, outstanding holster. It is QLS fork ready. So if you're already married to the Safari Land stuff, you can dump that weird cant and you can get yourself into a more modern design holster with a CompTAC CT3. Now, if you don't know who CompTAC is, they are the sister company to HSGI High Speed Gear, which gave us the beloved Taco pistol, rifle pouch, and tons of other gear that pipe hitters and operators around the world choose to this day and love. I still carry HSGI gear to this day. I've been buying it since I was a snot-nosed little kid in the Army. I love it. It's what I wear at work currently. Outstanding. And this is the company that decided to bond with to make holsters. Now let's address the speed of this one since it is a level three as well. A little bit different than the alien gear and the activation with that thumb press. It's fast. Even by level one retention standards, this thing is blazing fast. Neck and neck with my alien gear holster. Sub 0.9 second draws and first rounds on targets with those. That's quick. And again, this one was able to shave about a quarter second off my draw and first round on target as compared to a level three Safari Land. The CT3 is an all Kydex design with minimal fasteners on it, and they offer it in multiple different levels of retention. So you can pretty much get whatever you need to suit your needs out there retention wise. Uh, as far as the durability of this one, it is a newer design, uh, but it is pretty well proven at this. I've seen a lot of these out there in the wild now. And if you want to see kind of the durability and punishment these can take, Alex from Iron Infidel actually did a video on these things where him and some Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu guys, some pretty stout dudes were really going at it with these things, trying to tear these things off of each other. And it did extremely well. I mean, we're talking about 185, 205 pound guy that knows what he's doing in a ground fight, trying to rip a holster off of you. It can happen. And the fact that this thing lived through those scenarios, and I'll link that video down below for you to check out, it did very well. Alex is also the guy that came out with these battle bottles right here. Um, these things are absolutely awesome. So he sent me uh, one of these to try out and mess around with. I love this thing because it's got pockets for like your cell phone, uh, a couple things, you maybe like a, a quick bar, some protein powder or something in there, your wallet when you're in the gym. It's got your little braided handle on some Grimlocks, you fill it with water, and worst case scenario, you can use it as a bludgeoning object if you're not carrying your Second Amendment stuff in the gym, but awesome stuff. If you guys are interested in these, he actually gave me a 5% off link. I'm gonna link that down below for you guys because stay hydrated, stay dangerous, and I guess stay looking cool and tactical in the gym. All right, well, what about the price point on the CT3 stuff? So these are gonna come in for that model that I showed you, level three with the light and the red dot option on there, right at about 185. So it's in that same price point, depending on the options you wanna go with. Again, that one is versatile usable with the QLS fork if you're already married to Safari Land. So that can be a very nice transition. You don't have to buy all different gear, slap a fork on it and go to work. Always just remember that spooning leads to forking. And again, like the Alien Gear holster, the Comtac is made in the USA. HSGI and Comtac are super pro-America companies. They love our military. They love all that good American stuff and they really do do their best to employ all Americans, all in the United States, all in their factory. And they are super proud of the ability to supply our military, all that good stuff. So absolutely awesome company. Now this is about the time where somebody's probably already lost their mind in the comments saying, well, which one would you trust your life to? This is a very easy question to answer because I would trust my life to all three of these. I've carried all three of these holsters at work. I have no problem trusting either of these. They're all going to work. They're going to do the job. You may be married into one, locked into one based on policy, SOPs, your unit, your department, your agency, whatever it is. But if you have an option, that's why I wanted to do these videos because there's more than just Safari Land out there. Safari Land is just probably the biggest major producer of actual duty holsters right now because they've been around the longest producing a quality duty holster. 
We do have a lot of positives with almost all of these, but we do have some negatives as well that we're going to talk about. And I wrote these down so I didn't miss any of them. So all three of these things, awesome, proven, durable, well-built, and they're going to last you years. And that's good because these things aren't cheap. 150 to 200 bucks or more, that's not cheap. A piece of gear, when you're paying that much money, it should last. All of them give you options for lights, ride heights, different QD attachments, and of course, different levels of retention. That's gonna be very important because you may be locked into a certain level of retention based on where you work. Now, Safariland's been around the longest as far as the duty holster game goes, and they are going to have the most options. They pretty much make a duty style holster for just about anything that's gonna be normally or widely carried. Um, everything from CZs to Glocks to Smiths to SIGs. Uh, they've got them for the PDPs now. FN, they make a ton of holsters, MMPs, everything you could pretty much want to carry that you would normally carry at work, they're probably gonna make a holster for it. But when it comes to speed, the Alien Gear and the CompTAC both absolutely decimate the Safari Land Level 3. I don't know if it's because of the Safari Land's cant or the SLS ALS hood, how it's like forward, down, and then back, uh, but absolutely decimate it when it comes to speed. Both the Alien Gear and the CompTAC are very intuitive, very fast, and again, I was able to shave about a quarter second off that draw and first round on target, and that is a huge gain while retaining a level three retention. Now, price-wise, when you go across the packages offered, I think Safari Land, like say you're looking for a Glock 17 holster with a red dot and a light, I think you can generally find those for like 140, 150 bucks. So it might be five, 10% cheaper than the Rapid Duty Force from Alien Gear or the CompTAC CT3. However, for me, I'm gonna spend a little bit extra money for one, made in the USA, and two, picking up speed at a higher level of retention. When it comes to the level three holster from Safari Land, it's almost exactly the same price. So depending on what level of retention you're looking for, that is gonna mess with the price a little bit, but in general, you're gonna see them 150 to 200 for pretty much all three of them. Now for me personally, I can tell you in all honesty, I've probably purchased my last Safari Land holster. Unless I've got something that I just need a duty retention holster for and Alien Gear or CompTAC doesn't make it, I'm probably not going to be buying another Safari Land holster. One, I just can't stand the can't. I don't know if they're made in the USA. It looks like they're being made in Mexico now unless you find a US made one, which is probably gonna be a lot more expensive. And it's just more intuitive and faster to use the CT3 CompTAC or the Rapid Duty Alien Gear. And I'm gonna take the speed in the made in the USA for a little bit more money. I really hope this was helpful for all of you, whether you're military, law enforcement, security, or just getting into it, and you're required to buy your own gear or choose your own gear, because quite honestly, these are really the only three companies that I would be looking at right now. Now, if someone else comes along, I'm happy to take a look at it, but these are the three that just seem to be proven, fast, durable, and absolutely 100% reliable. Now, remember, if you're carrying a gun for a living out there, you have got to have retention. Minimum level one, level three is best, but you've got to marry that speed with your retention because you're gonna be reactionary and you gotta get that smoke wagon skinned and you gotta be able to go to work with it really, really quick. Well, make sure you get subbed up down below, turn that notification on because all that stuff is a huge help to the channel. When you like or you leave that comment down below, letting me know what your favorite carry duty holster is out there in the world right now or which ones you have tried and have utterly failed you or you just gotten rid of. You get out on the range, have some fun, be safe, practice your speed on retention, from your holster and remember if you stay ready you ain't got to get ready even if it's just a holster today i will see you all on the next one